Hey guys, here we are back in the shop today. Um, I'm Ty Brown from Ty'sPlanes.com. Um, I've had for a while on my website some cars that I make. Um, these are all cast resin except for the wheels themselves. And then you can choose uh, which style um, couplers you want on them. Um, I use a, um, a KD gearbox and then I have my own um, Lincoln pin couplers that I make for these things, uh, or you can make the uh, you could use the um, the uh, link and pin couplers that are that are fixed to the ends. Um, I use these uh, in, in my logging layout. Uh, they're 12 using a uh, this is a 120.3 scale ruler. These are 12 and a half foot cars, 12 and a half foot by six and a half foot wide. Uh, they use standard, the, the, the Bachman um, um, Spectrum wheels, it's the smaller set, not the larger set. So um, they, they sell them in packs of four, so that means you can get two cars um, out of your, uh, you know, for out of one pack of, of wheels. Um, anyway, what I was going to do is I'm going to go over quickly how I make these. But this is just the standard car, doesn't have anything, it, it doesn't have anything on it. Um, I do use these as transition cars, like from a locomotive that doesn't have Lincoln pin. On one side, I can put the uh, actual uh, coupler, and then on the other side, I use the Lincoln pin coupler so I can transition and have a whole uh, set of cars that are Lincoln pin. And you can also use this to transition into like your uh, log cars if you have um, if you have Lincoln pin couplers on them. Uh, some other things I do, I do have a bunch of different things. Now this is a tank car. I make the uh, these are all cast resin also. This is the, uh, the, the, the things the tank sets on. Uh, I also have the tanks and I also have uh, like uh, just locomotive boxes that, that can be used. So that's just, uh, like I said, I got a whole line of cars. And um, the Lincoln pin couplers I have, they are fully, art they fully articulate inside the gearbox, just like a, a regular coupler does. But anyway, I was gonna show you the kit real quick kit's very easy. There is um, the two parts here. Then you have um, four journals. Um, I was going to show you the journal here. This, I hope you can see this in the camera. I did one in brown. I can do them in brown or black. But um, what it is, these have a, they're, they're cast resin, but they have a brass bushing in here, a brass bearing for the wheel to fit into and it travels freely in there, so it should give you long service life. These are, are made to where they just fit right into this slot right here, and um, so you got four of those. Um, you have your details cast into them, the, um, the corner pl plates with all the uh, bolt heads. Now something else I do, you may be able to see here, you may not, I, find, I cast um, steel, um, it's, it's called um, what is it called? Uh, key, key stock, but it's steel. It, it goes the full length of the car on both sides. I also do it in the, um, this is the top of it, top of the car. It's got molded in details. It's got the, uh, the wood grain and also the where the nail heads would be. But you can see definitely in here that I have the uh, a piece of steel in both sides to keep it from warping at all. Um, there's some people that's produced some stuff in the past that um, over time just heat and, and cold will make it warp. Well, the steel keeps it from uh, warping up. Okay, but um, so we've got these parts together. What I'm gonna do is uh, I am going to uh, get my stuff together and um, get ready to get started. I'll show you how to do this. Uh, this this casting is a little bit dirty. I, I probably made this casting probably. A, a year or so ago it's been laying and it's got a little bit it's a little dirty but I'll show you how to put it together and how to um, paint it and everything like that it's very easy to do um, it's will be a lot cheaper than me doing it myself these things are kind of just labor intensive on just uh, uh, putting them together so I'm not putting them together but uh, finishing them out so it's be cheaper on everybody if they just build their own cars so let me get stuff together and I'll be right back Okay guys, here we are back. Um, I'm gonna tell you the very first thing to do is you need to wash all your parts. Just go ahead and, and wash them, 
get them um, with, with a little bit of degreaser. These things usually have some, um, I do use a mold release. So you want to wash those. Um, once you got them washed and they're dry, what you need to do is, um, you may, they may be slightly scuffed on the back. I'm not sure. It's just this, this one um, I did already. But what you want to do is just take a flat sand, sanding block. You want uh, 100 grit paper on it. And you just want just to, if, if you see any shiny spots, you just want to sand those until they're no longer shiny. Okay, this gives your um, glue something to bite to. So we're going to sand both sides. Just no, you don't want to do a lot of sand. You just want to just get the um, just get the sheen off of it. All right. Um, now the next thing to do is try to make a decision on what type of glue you're going to use. Um, you've got I you you can use if you're not if you don't trust how well you uh, fast you work. Um, you can use five minute epoxy. The problem with epoxy is if you're outdoors, I do all my stuff indoors. If you're outdoors and you leave it sitting in the sun for eight hours a day, over time, the epoxy may soften up. I generally use uh, CA glue. Um, I keep it in the freezer, so it'll slow your reaction time down just a little bit. But um, once this stuff catches hold, you're stuck. I mean, it's, on this, it's not going to um, move a lot. So you have, to be, you have to be precise in sticking these things on there. Um, what I do in general is I practice a couple times and I grab this like this. You can see my fingertips are over the edge and I got it where I put my, my little finger over the edge and I, you can take it and get these things because this sides and the ends match exactly to this here. Now the, the side plates or the angle plates on the, excuse me, the angle plates on the end will stick outside of this. So you want the ends and the sides to be flush. So I'm coming in here and I can, I can actually touch the base here with my fingers first and then just bring this on down in place. And it's, it's pretty well centered. So I can grab all that and I can pretty much set it every time right down on there pretty easily. So what we're going to do, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use CA. I'm going to come down here and put a real thin line of CA on all of these joints here. Okay. I'm going to put... And like I said, this just came out. I keep it in the freezer, so it came out. So it's, it's, it's cold. It'll keep the. Uh, it'll slow down the reaction just a little bit. Another thing is, if you do buy CA, you want uh, medium to thick. Thick does take the thicker. The uh, it does take a little bit longer to set up. So you may want to get the thick. All right, I've, I've squeezed it out there. Now I'm just going back, and I'm. I'm not squeezing anymore, I'm just using the end to uh, spread out the glue. And you want to get your paper towel ready, so if you have any excess, squeeze out the ends, you can wipe it off. So I'm going to take a piece of paper towel, I'm going to fold it up, a couple times have it laying here. I've got my, I got my piece ready. I've trial fit it. All right, let's see here. So I set that perfect the first time. Now, what you're going to do is that's already grabbed. I would just either um, clamp it or just set some stuff down, set, set some weights on it to. Um, to set it to make it um, adhere really well. Another thing about these cars are is with the steel inside of them, this car right here weighs almost a pound. That's without adding anything to it. It weighs about a pound. So these cars track really well. They move really, uh, they, they stay on the track really well. You don't have a problem with that. So this part is um, in place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. I don't want anything to come up. Um, so I've got, I'm going to let that sit, and once that dries, I'm going to come back. Um, I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, the next thing we're going to work on is uh, getting this painted. You can't add the journals until you get it uh, 
at least um, primed. Uh, and then, uh, you know, just according how far you want to go before you put the journals in place. All right, here's what you need to do is I go down and find some, get a piece of wood. This is um, it's a half inch wide, a quarter inch thick, and then you can make it as long as you want. You just need to make it long enough that you can reach in here and pull it up. So what we're doing now, this the half inch wide is giving you your distance. The journal is off the back wall here. Okay, so you need uh, one piece on each side, and this gives us a, a standard distance off the end here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is once we got those in there, we'll come in here and mark the place of the journal. We're going to mark it on both sides. We ain't going to actually do, I've already done these, you're going to do all four where all four journals are going to go. So if we would take it and go ahead and glue these in, the problem is, is the wheels will be in the way to paint. Okay. So what we're going to do is pull these out, take this out. I'm going to take some regular tape, I mean regular painter's tape. I'm going to um, cut it nice and straight here. We're going to come in and where that is, now you want to come back from your line just a little bit because what we're doing is uh, we won't just, we're just preserving a gluing surface is what we're doing because it's, it's better to glue on virgin um, uh, uh, plastic. So we're going to just take and put that in place. I'm taking it. You see, I got. Let me pull this right here. So I'm holding that in place, and I'm just going to push this down the wall there. I could have cut that a little bit shorter. You want it to go all the way down the edge. So we're going to come in here. We're going to push that down, and you can see that that goes down the edge and protects our gluing surface. So this paint, this tape is not quite wide enough, so we're gonna put another piece, same way I did before, come in here and push this down. All right, so that's protecting our gluing surface. And what we're gonna do now, we just take that edge and cut that off, that excess tape off, and pull it out. So what, we're, what we've got now is a good, um, protection for where we're going to glue it. It goes down in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to do all four with that. And this tape, all it does is protect our gluing surface. So we're going to get that done. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to prime the whole thing. Um, I usually use a, uh, like this is a Rust-Oleum black primer. Uh, if you've washed it really good, this stuff sticks pretty good to it. Um, uh, you can use some automotive primers. Just don't buy a cheap primer because this is plastic it's hooking to. Um, I've handled these cars a good bit, um, but you start rubbing them regularly, and you will get back down to the bare plastic. I mean, it's just, it's, it's not like a pre-colored car like you're getting from Bachman. It's molded into the plastic, so you can remove that. Uh, I may actually start casting these in either a brown or a black, so if any do, anything does rub off, that um, it will allow it to. Um, you won't be able to see as 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 if it was white. I just bought. I just recently come out the last year or so some pigments to do these in a color. So if I did them in a black and you rub the area off, it wouldn't make a big difference. So um, I'm gonna work on um, um, doing those. And like here's the black and there's the brown. So we'll, we'll work on doing that. But um, we'll go ahead and get this primed. And uh, once we get it primed, we will uh, move along from there. Hey guys, we're back here at the table. I was going to show you, I have primed this a solid black. I used that black primer. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of detail in the wood. You see a lot of wood grain in this, and it's hard to see on the camera, but it's really good and detailed. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm going back and the base of this is um, uh, I use a burnt sienna. I just think it looks like the, the good railroad colors. These are this is the one here that's, that was done a long time ago. Um, but anyway, I use a burnt sienna. You can use uh, they make it in all the brands like Americana and this is folk art. Um, all of them have them. Uh, I would just pick one brand, and stick with it because the colors do vary a little bit. But this will take two coats. And uh, I, I made sure the primer dried really well. Um, I was going to show you something else. I, at Hobby Lobby, they got these brushes you can buy. It's a whole set. 
and these with the flat edges are really good i mean the whole set's like 18 bucks but by the time you get to 40 percent off you're down under you know right at 10 bucks for a for a big set um but anyway it's gonna take two coats i'm gonna paint one totally on you don't need a real thick coat i'm gonna let it sit and then i'm gonna paint another one uh we'll do the whole um I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna. I've still got the tape in place, so we've protected our areas. We're gonna glue to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get this painted. I'm not gonna paint the top or put in or paint the the angle plates. I'm just gonna paint the bottom before we install the the, the wheels. And uh, I, I am priming the journals. I'm gonna paint them too. But we're gonna uh, get this painted, let it dry, install the wheels. Then we'll go and paint the top. I'll show you how we paint it and then weather it. So um, I'm going to get this finished up. And when I get back, we should have the journals and everything ready to install. Okay, guys, here we are back. Um, I've got it all painted. I want to show you I, I pulled the tape off of one of these. Um, I did not paint the top. This is just I'm just trying to get it to where we can get it, the car up on its wheels and not have to add any more paint to it later. So what we're going to do is uh, or around the journals. So I've already um, primed the journals. I primed them in black. There's no primer on the gluing surfaces. I just took some um, tape and uh, put over that to keep it from um, keep it from having to uh, uh, be sanded off. Anyway, you do want to lightly sand this just right over the edge just just enough to give it a bite so it can attach to this and um, so that's that's ready now another thing you need to do you need to decide about your couplers um, if I'm gonna use the KD gearboxes and couplers I add a uh, piece of uh, plywood right here to screw it down to but you can do that at any time now you can do that later now before you paint this end if you're going to use a um, a static or a uh, Lincoln pin coupler that's, that does not articulate you need to go ahead before this is painted and mark where you want it rough that area up just a little bit with a little sandpaper and then glue that in place okay because that's a that would be a static coupler um, I ran these for a while I just like the I just like the articulated ones better so I, I'm, I have changed all mine over to the to the other style but you need to put that on prior to uh, painting okay so um, I'm actually leaving the journals black I can paint those later I have a uh, a rust color paint that I, I want I'll use and once these are in and the wheels are on you can still I mean, you got plenty of room to reach around there and paint all that. It's just that painting everything underneath here would be the difficult thing to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue this one journal in. I've got my spacer, which I put right there. Um, another little trick you can take, and you need to test fit this first, is trying to hold that in place up against this side. If you just take a, this is just a standard piece of paper. It was just off a, a a plastic I mean just a, a coated advertisement piece of paper and I just cut it and I fold it over sideways if you'll take it and fold it over and as you push this down in there just leave that in place that'll kind of push it over this way um, down lower it'll push it over so I, I do that when I glue those in you just want to make sure it's not too tight that you can't pull it out later and you may have to actually make it a little thicker according to the space back there so um see I, I that's two pieces and that's too thick so you just have to figure out what works best i'll put a piece in the middle here and add a little thick more thickness to it so that's down in down in there first and i slide this down and see that's just tight enough right there that allow that to hold it up against while the glue sets sets um then i'll pull it out so i'm gonna go ahead and ca this one in this side I can do both both of them on this side and then this all you have to do is hold this in and uh, put it in place oh I got that a piece I gotta pull it tape out for it'll fit but um, now it's up to you if you want to put just a tad of grease in the journal there uh, like I said there is a piece of brass that is 
cast into this so you have a bear a natural bearing there so I'm gonna go ahead and get these glued in and then we'll move along from there okay guys I got the first set in there and just let me tell you I about screwed up you gonna have to put it both of these in at the same time it's been a while since I put one of these together um, I had glued that one in place and this was really tight to, to get that in the hole and slide it down but I, I was able to get it in there and it runs really smooth um, what I'm using is I'm using the Bachman grease and I am taking just a, just a little tiny bit and putting it in there it's not gonna take much and I just moved I just put it in there try not to get it in on the outside and uh, put that in place All right, I'm gonna go I've got my spacers in place you can see I have removed the tape I'm gonna go ahead and, and install both of these while I'm on doing the video so I've already sanded them come here I'm just taking CA I'm running a, a thin bead just back and forth all right that's one Got the other one right here, right up on the top ledge, and then back and forth across there. We'll just make sure we got decent coverage. All right. So I'm going to take, put that in there, put this here, and I'm going to hold this in place as I drop them in all right now if you've got that piece of paper like I said you need to trial fit it first you need to slide it in there to hold that over see that moves nice and smooth so we're up against our up against our um, spacers and we just got it held in place and um, I also use some styrene it's a little bit thick for what I want But um, I just push that in there just to make it tight enough to um, hold it over. And on styrene, I'm just beveling the edge so I can get the get it started, and it holds it, it holds it in place. And so we'll let that set up about five ten minutes, and it'll be ready. It'll be ready to run. And um, but we still got to do some painting on it. So let me let this set up, um, and then we'll come back and finish out the car. Okay, guys, I'm here back with the car. Um, I've got all the base painted. I went ahead and I painted all the journals. Um, I've also painted the angle plates on the ends. Uh, you can. It, it, we're doing all the base colors. If you if you um, touch something with a difficulty, you can always go back and and uh, do it before we do the final weathering. Uh, Another thing is, I would probably go ahead and paint the journals first uh, before gluing them in. I mean, I did. The only problem is, it's hard to really get inside between the wheel face and that. I mean, if, if you're really uh, particular and want it that color, then you need to paint it ahead of time and then put it in place. And then if you scratch anything, you can always touch it up later. So now what we're going to do, uh, we're going to paint the deck here. Um, I, it's just hard. To, you can't see the detail that's into it because all the wood grain is in this top. It's really nice. Uh, what we're gonna do? I start off. Uh, even though I end up with this color here, which is a which is a weathered wood, uh, and you can weather them. Each one I'm different just by how much um, uh, co uh, washes you put on it. I start off with a desert sand. This is uh, Anita's uh, all-purpose acrylic. Um, craft paint it's desert sand it makes a really good base color for a wood especially if you're going to weather it so what we're going to do is go paint the whole top we're going to come and paint all the around the edges all the way around and we're going to paint the whole top um, before we do anything else I mean, once we do that besides putting on the putting on the um, the Lincoln pin couplers we're pretty much done except well of course we've got to weather it but uh, I'm gonna paint those get this whole thing painted and then we'll move back but you want to make sure you get all the detail along the edges um, and just if you do touch this down here just just go back and go ahead and touch it up and um, but I'll get that done and I'll be right back okay guys here we are back at the car 
uh, I got the whole top painted, uh, painted all the way around the edges. I've touched up any area that uh, I need to with a fine brush to make sure I get all the colors in the correct place. Uh, one thing I did add on the bottom is because I'm going to use the um, KD gear boxes with the um, with the articulating um, Lincoln pin coupler here on each side. What I did was I come in here and took a uh, it's a half inch thick piece of um, this is a piece of cedar. It's five eighths inch wide and one inch long, and I just glued it. I, I cleaned the paint off and I just glued it in in that area. And this allows me to put a screw in and use the uh, like I said the KD uh, gear box and then my Lincoln pin coupler. Uh, I did the, uh, when I cast the Lincoln pin color, I did it in brown and I just went ahead and covered it in that uh, rust color on the end that, that's going to be visible. So, uh, all right, so that's done. Now, what we're going to do, the only thing we have left to do is um, do the weathering. And um, like I said, I like the, uh, do the, uh, the desert sand and the Anita's. I think it makes a good uh, wood color to start off with. Um, all I do now is um, put some washes on it. Uh, I'm gonna use a. I start off with a black, and then um, I will. Um, it's just water mixed with um, some uh, black acrylic. It's probably like a ten to one. Uh, you can see how that goes. You may have to add a little bit more, but um, when it goes on, it looks dark. Um, you, you try not to put too much on time. It's just something you have to play with to figure out um, what works for you. Um, but I put mix it in there, mix it up really good, take a really wide brush, and you need to do the whole car um, so it, it'll, it, it all looks uh, uniform. And then if you want, you can go back and do add, add a little bit of a brown, do, do the same thing with a brown, and it'll add a different tone to the color itself. But all I do is I uh, take the brush, dip it in the, the stain, and then I just brush it on. And I'm like I said, I'm doing the whole car, sides and ends and everything. And we're just gonna let this dry. And this brings out all the all the detail in the wood itself which is really good but you need to make sure you get an even coat so you can uh, pull out all that detail now that's a little dark but I'm gonna pull it out And if you get too much in the area, like you think it's too much, I could just take the tip of a, of a, um, you can reduce it by just taking a paper towel and touching it to the area and it will uh, pick up some of that color. Now it looks really dark now, but when it dries, it'll, it'll leave just the black in the crevices. So you can see I've got, I got my case is a little bit heavy. I'm just trying to get what's puddled on top, leaving what's in the creases. All right, I'm gonna set that off to the side and let it dry. Once it dries out, I'm gonna reevaluate it, maybe add some um, brown to it, and then come back and, and do, use some powders on it. But anyway, I will um, be back here in a few minutes with the finished car and, and let you see what it looks like. Okay guys, here we are with the finished car. Um, the um, the wash dried. I, it was a little darker than I normally go, but it still turned out good. I went back over some weathering powders, put a little bit, a few browns in it. I know my lighting in here is not as great as it could be. Um, I did, um, uh, like I say, you, the whole car's finished out. I did make, I do have um, steak pockets made for this car that um, you can make all kinds of small cars out of it um, they they will be um, there'll be an option to the kit so what I can provide in a kit 
I'll go back over it again, is you get a the framework, the top, you get the journals. Um, if you choose, I'll, I can th you get a set of um, the Lincoln pen couplers. Now you would have to purchase the wheel sets, which you get two uh, right now on eBay or um, they're going for about twenty bucks for two sets. That's ten dollars per set of wheels, and then the um, the journal box. I mean, not journal box, but the uh, gear boxes here. They're not. I mean, they're like two two or three dollars for a set. Anyway, um, so I have that. I do have the like I said, the steak pockets available. They make great addition if you can put sides or make it uh, some type of loaded out car. Uh, if you go on my website, you can see I have. Um, Different tanks available. I have different boxes available, so you can make your own custom cars. Got that one. I've also got a, a, a larger um, tank that'll go on one. Um, these gear boxes will fit the Bachman Spectrum uh, couplers, or you can use um, the KD couplers. You know, you got your options there. But I made these mainly for my Lincoln pen when I when I did my own cars to, to go in a, a backwoods uh, small car. Like I said, it's 12 and a half feet and uh, on 120.3 scale. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the vid build video. Um, if you have any questions, you feel free to contact me at tiesplanes.com. There on there, you find my email address and my phone number. Um, so thank you very much. Have a good day.